Hello and welcome to Active Living. Today's going to be a special day. We've got Chris Barnett here, our supervisor, and we've got Chelsea Petrusa here. She's also from Parks and Rec. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about the thing, the big topic in Lake Orion, which is the purchase of the Great Lakes Athletic Club. Mm-hmm. Welcome to our program. Thanks, George. George, thanks for having us. We're, we are excited to be here to talk about this, this exciting project. In the well, we're, we're excited to have you as well. All right. <laughs> but there's a couple of, there's a lot of, lot of controversy going around in the neighborhood, as you probably know. We've got some people that saying, oh man, we shouldn't have bought it. We got other people saying, you know what, it's the greatest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. So we kind of like to talk a little bit about the pluses and the minuses. I guess the first question is, and this is kind of a hard one to answer, is we've got health clubs in the area already. You've got Planet Fitness that you can join for 10 bucks a month. And uh, why would the township want to get involved in a health club? Yeah, so first of all, um, super glad to be here and excited to announce if, if, if residents don't know and haven't paid attention to what we've been up to, um, we've recently created a new position, Assistant Park, Parks and Recreation Director, and filled that with Chelsea. Yeah. So many Good of choice, our, by the way. <laughs> uh, I, and listen, we agree. So uh, we can start there. Um, and, and know that um, she came from another state where she worked in a center, a community center, uh, similar to what we mm-hmm. will eventually be. And you'll hear a little bit about that as we chat today. But I think the important message for our residents, and you use the word controversy, I would maybe challenge people and say use the word opportunity okay um, there's a lot of interesting opinions out there and, and they're all really valid and I think what um, um, I'll speak for myself but the other board members that helped make this decision mm-hmm. and the other staff members um, once we are able to sit down and chat with people um, and we have an open door at, regarding any topic especially this one um, we have won people over I would say with with what our plan is and, and understanding why the township would do this so to answer your question specifically about why would we get in the health club business, I would tell you that we are temporarily in the health club business. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is we um, purchased a gym that was um, positive cash flow. Um, we purchased the gym out of receivership. There's been some confusion about that. Um, it wasn't a bankruptcy, but essentially as of August 1st, um, Comerica Bank, the, the main creditor on the previous ownership group, um, Called the note. Called the note. Uh, wanted the note to be paid in full. The uh, the previous ownership group said they weren't going to do that. So Comerica appointed a third party, a receiver that came in. And as of August first, twenty twenty three, they were the operators of the gym on behalf of the bank. So the staff stayed, but the payroll, everything from paying payroll to the consumers' energy bill to the Comcast bill to making decisions about the day to day operations were made by uh, the receiver called the Finia Group. So enter the township. Okay. Uh, and I know you'll, you'll talk about price and things like that, but to answer your question specifically, we made the conscious decision to take the opportunity based on years of resident feedback and us doing our own research on potentially building a community pool, a community center, uh, not just for seniors, uh, but for everyone. Um, and we saw this as a great opportunity to jump into the, to that uh, realm for a fraction of the price it would cost us to do in 2023 or 24 or 25. Um, so in the short term, while it's a gym that's cash flow positive on a month to month basis, uh, it's in the best interest of the township to continue that model uh, while we work through what that transition is going to look like from the current operations to more of a community center. When it's all said and done, the vision that our board has, the vision that I have and Chelsea and Aaron and the rest of the leadership is a world-renowned, <laughs> uh, yeah, state-of-the-art, state. innovative community center. And I can tell you, for me personally, I visited mm-hmm. Troy, um, Livonia, Macomb, Sterling Heights. Sterling Heights. Um, we are doing our homework because we're seeing what's working. Farmington Hills, we're seeing what's working in other right. communities, mm-hmm. um, what, what they would do different. And so there's going to be this transition process, which will honestly, frankly, probably be at least a year. Right. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to operate a gym. Okay, now, the, one of the questions I have, obviously, is if they have ca- a positive cash flow, how can they be going bankrupt? <laughs> it's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot that goes into that. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you, um, I, and, and, and there were four partners, and I won't name them here, and right. people could do the research if they're interested. Um, the way I would categorize my interaction with them, great people, they built a business that was right. in place for 20 years. Um, when we first met with them in August, they were very clear that COVID was 
catastrophic to their business, their industry, frankly. Right. Um, they still came, coming out of COVID. Uh, their membership numbers pre-COVID were about 6,000 members. Uh, there were about 4,000 members in August when we first met with them. So they had ramped back up somewhat from COVID, but not all the way. Okay. But they were cash flow positive. As far as why were they in receivership and chose not to restructure their loan with Comerica, that's not a question that Chelsea or I can answer. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I can tell you that, um, you know, the township, uh, the, in order to recreate what's there, mm -hmm. if we were to build a community center oh, yeah. with, with pools on that acreage, um, if, if it existed, which it doesn't, there, aren't, there isn't a parcel in the township on a, on a good road like that mm -hmm. um, with visibility that's available with, for that type of in size of building. But to just recreate what's there in today's dollars, uh, we ran numbers and it's between 25 and $30 million. Okay. The purchase price was $9 million. So we feel like it's a great value, something that we would never been able to have accomplished on that size and scale. We're able to, to, to jump in at $9 million. And um, I don't know if you know, but with our master plan surveys that we did throughout the last six months, the community, I mean, it was great interest in wanting some sort of center. So, they, so when you took the surveys, mm -hmm. basically they came back very positive. For exactly, and that's not just the past one. Um, I mean, we've seen it in the township survey, the Parks and Rec, okay. and everywhere. To answer your question too, why would we want to take out a fitness club? I would also say that, I mean, that's essentially what we're doing now. I mean, yes, Orient Center is a smaller scale, but we had the exercise room, we had group exercise rooms, we have all of our trails within our community that we keep maintained right. for you guys to exercise. Um, we're consistently trying to make it so you live in a community that's healthy and you feel like you're getting exactly what you need for your family. So this is just like the cherry on top, honestly. Well, I agree. I think you've, yeah. you've been doing a fantastic job with the yeah. facilities that we have. Exactly. Which brings up another question. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with the Orient Center? It's a great question. So, so all of these things were discussed in a very uh, compressed timeline, right? So right. We, we actually heard, I heard through, honestly, through Chelsea and Aaron mm -hmm. about the building being for sale uh, in August. Um, and at the time, the, the receiver was already in place. We didn't know that until we visited there. I think it was August 12th was the first time I went there and met with, with the ownership group. Um, and so, so admittedly, it's been a compressed time, scale, time frame from August until the auction, which was November 7th, right. uh, which happened in Detroit, uh, to the closing on December 1st, and then the receiver left officially December 21st. So all those things happen. There's a lot <laughs> that happened in a short time frame. But to um, answer the question, ultimately, um, our goal would be to have everything under one roof right. at that yeah. facility. So right. uh, amazing space for senior citizens, amazing space for youth, uh, a place for an, uh, an election precinct, a uh, place for community gatherings, a place for all those things that happen in other communities. A community center, right? Com a true community center. <laughs> right, yes. right. Uh, so, so long term, and I mean, I mean this long term. We 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 have made a commitment through the board and to anyone that's called and reached out. Um, the seniors are most concerned because they're worried we're going to displace them. Yep. Um, we will eventually move them, but hopefully upgrade them. That's yes, the goal. Like we're not gonna, nothing will be uh, lesser. Now, we, I'm sure we will hear, just like when we moved from the village to oh, yeah. this building about, yeah. you know, we moved the cheese and it was different and we had to, you know, use an elevator here now and things like that. Um, we've heard about the roundabout and the concern of access and things like that. We've heard right. those things. Um, mm -hmm. But our commitment is, that's why we're taking this kind of a slow, deliberate path Okay. And not just quickly moving things over there and moving, changing rooms because we want to make sure we do it the right way. So you're hiring an outside consultant to yep. come in and, and help you with putting this whole plan together. Exactly. exactly. Yep. So we have great staff. We have great people that have experience, but we think it's really important to check with other experts. Right. Um, we know we have a really great building that's in good shape. Mm -hmm. we, we know we have a great site. Uh, we know we have space there. Um, we want to make sure that when we set it up and, and, and kind of divide out the space and where things are going to happen, that it's, it's done for the best ease for seniors to come and go right. um, and things like that. And we internally have some ideas, but we think mm -hmm. it's important to talk with experts that this is all they do across the country um, is take, go into different communities. Uh, and the group we're kind of zeroed in on now has done a lot of work in Michigan mm -hmm. and they're renowned for their work. So Great. that's our plan. Well, you said the building was in good shape. I've heard some rumors that it needs a new roof. Well, I mean, look, the building's 20 years old. Right. The, the, the original building is the uh, Newmeyer grocery store. The old IGA, IGA the store, old IGA, right. Which right. Was, 
growing up, I used to come out here and see family who lived in, in, in Orion and, and we went grocery shopping there. So that's the kind of the south part of the building. The north right. part of the building was built in uh, 2002, 2003, so right. it's about 20 years old. Through our due diligence process, we had contractors look at all the mechanical units, the pool, the roof, everything. Okay. Yes. So to answer your question, uh, and these are a lot of these are long answers because there's a lot of work that's gone into this. Mm -hmm. We know we we already are we we started on December 22nd with maintenance that had been deferred. I'll say. Right. Uh, coming up with a schedule and a plan of things to do. Um, does the whole roof need to be replaced? No. Are there sections of the roof that need attention? Absolutely. Right. Just like we do on all of our facilities and all of our buildings. So. Okay. Um, I will tell you the feedback we've gotten in the last couple weeks mm -hmm. has been really positive from not only staff but also members that they see us in there. Um, and no disrespect to the previous ownership group, but they knew they were on their way out, so the, a lot of things sort of kind of put things off. Were kind yeah. of put on right. the back burner. Yeah, they needed to yeah. be. Yeah, of course. Well, now we're talking about nine million dollars plus. Where what what is the source of this money? Where is this mm -hmm. coming from? Another and the obvious question is. Well, gee, why, if you're going to spend $10 million on that, why couldn't you use the $10 million to reduce my taxes? That's a, okay, so there's a great, a great questions. So the, 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 the short answer is we are pulling funds from several different sources. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those sources can only be used for specific things, not to reduce taxes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know, and listen, COVID was a horrific pandemic that crippled lots of communities. We struggled, obviously. One of the things that came out of COVID was a lot of funding from the federal government. Okay. Every community, every right. city, village, township, county, state in the country. Um, specifically the CARES and um, um, ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act. Um, those dollars were specifically only allowed to be used for certain things. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. Our township board, this township board I'm extremely proud of, Some of the, a lot of the communities across the country use those things for paying higher wages for empl government employees during the pandemic. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that's frivolous, but in my opinion, other frivolous type expenses that would seem offensive to most residents. Right. This board made it a, a very specific decision that we wanted to put those dollars into things that people can see, touch, and feel. And during the pandemic, we had record usage of our parks mm -hmm. because once the, once the first kind of lockdown was lifted, we still had all those, the social distancing things in place and we drove people to our parks and paths. And so we earmarked a lot of those, most of those dollars for parks and paths projects that we had scheduled to do. I'll give you an example of one, Peterson Lodge renovation over right. at Camp Agawam. I was gonna ask you about yep. that. <laughs> so yeah. when this opportunity came okay. to us, we were not looking for it, it kind of jumped in our lap. Mm -hmm. We, the first thing that we did, Aaron, Chelsea and I went out there and Sam, our chief of staff, met with the group. The very next thing we did is, we went and met with our budget director and said, could we pull the funds? Because I had to present this to the board and I right. knew it would be important to not have to pass a special millage and raise taxes to do this. The good news is, between the money we had from the ARPA and CARES Act that we had not yet spent, right. um, our host fee, which is the landfill, we get money every year for having right. a landfill here. People don't love the landfill, we have one. It, but it brings in a lot of money. It brings in money. Yeah. That, those, those dollars can't be spent to lower taxes. Those dollars can be spent on things that benefit the entire community. Okay. So that checks the box as well. And then we use general fund balance revenues. Admittedly, those dollars can be used for just about anything. Um, we do have one of the lower tax rates in the in the region. Um, and right. I like to put up on no, my- I know, I know. You know my slide. You know <laughs> my, uh, my- I get the slide memorized. That's good. Well, it's, it's a, I mean, listen, people joke Important. about that, but it's those those numbers are, are, are facts audited by- right. In, in Lansing, and, and that's why I like to show that because it's not Chris Barnett's idea or Mike Flood or Penny Schultz or Kim. This, these are the audited financial statements that every community has to submit that shows that we really we really operate more fiscally responsible than any of our neighbors, um, right. with the exception of one. I'll, I'll give you that Oakland Township. There, they, but they don't have the amenities we have. Mm -hmm. So, so could we have reduced taxes? Potentially, we could have slightly reduced taxes for people on that general fund piece. But the ARPA dollars, the CARES dollars, the host fee dollars, those fees can't go to reduce people's taxes. They're earmarked. To They're earmarked for community benefit, the things that okay. benefit the entire community. Now, ARPA and CARES could have been spent to pay me, pay Chelsea higher wages because we worked during COVID. We opted to not do those things that some other communities mm -hmm. chose to do. And so we put ourselves in a position we did not know. Admittedly, we did not know this was coming. We knew 
that with this master plan that just completed, we just did the board just adopted right. it last Tuesday, this, this Tuesday. Um, we knew that once again, our community was asking for indoor recreation. Our seniors were asking for places they could go in the winter and walk. Pool. Mm -hmm. In a pool. pool so we knew we were, people were asking for that. And we knew this next kind of iteration of discussions and budgeting would have to be, um, we even talked about this site at one point where we sit today, the community center, the current Orient Center. Um, could we put a pool here? Could we do right. some enclosed recreation? Right. So that's all right. been looked at. The opportunity to do that for about 33 cents on the dollar at today's construction costs and land acquisition costs were too good to pass up for this township board. Okay, okay. And what I've said before, and, and many people, um, we got a lot of the same questions and, and scrutiny in 2012 and 13 and 14 while we were in the process working with the Boy Scouts to mm -hmm. acquire Camp Agawam. Right. Why would we take, ta town, take 140 acres off the tax roll when that could be a neighborhood and be producing tax revenue and bringing more residents to our community. And the, the board at the time, there's three of us that, are st that were on the board then and still are, uh, Penny, Mike, and myself, made the decision and we took, took a lot of the same questions. Yeah. You're, you're spending my tax dollars you, to buy a big chunk of property. And I would say 10 years later, that was a phenomenal decision. That was a great decision that yeah. is one more reason that people wanna choose to live in our community because we have things like that that set us apart from sure from the Troys and the it's Sterling It's a treasure, Heights. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, another obvious question is, how much tax revenue are we losing because we are buying the health club? Yeah, so that's th that, that question has been asked. Um, I didn't bring the numbers with me, but I, I, I can be very, very transparent. Uh, it's not as much as what's been, um, some people have discussed on the social media sites. Um, <laughs> and so what we look at is the total taxes for the building, I think we're in the $100,000 range per year. Okay. Um, and I could be off a little bit, um, but only a portion of those taxes come to the township, right? right. For the general right. Most of it goes to the, the county. More the majority schools. goes to the schools and things like that. Right. So right. yes, we are taking those those um, those taxes from from those different authorities. Um, but again, should we build a community, should we have built a community center someplace else, it would have been a lot more money sure. up front, and then we would have also be in the same scenario there right. at some point right. as well. Right. Now in terms of staffing, you've got a pretty good sized staff over there now. Mm -hmm. You've got, I don't know how many employees there are at the Great Lakes Athletic Club previously. Mm -hmm. Are those people gonna stay on and, and continue the programs that they have? Or how are you planning to handle that? Yeah, I'd say right now, everything is status quo. We're doing everything that they did before, that the members loved, we're continuing that on. Um, like Chris said, we won't have any big decisions made until we have the consultant come in and give us that cost analysis. Right. And um, we understand what the community wants and then are able to dictate what everyone is, where they'll be placed. But, but, but the staff you're there- You're taking so on a kind of a different role here because mm -hmm. you've, you're taking on additional employees and mm -hmm. one of the things that you'd like to do is protect yourself in case you have some employees that are let's say sexual predators or something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Are you gonna vet these people? Yeah, good, good question. So, yeah. so we've, you know? we've uh, just completed onboarding about 90. Let's use a rough okay. number, 90 employees. Okay. Now, of that, the ma vast majority, almost all of them are part-time employees. Sure. You know, they may be trainers right. or lifeguards. Right. Um, mm -hmm. There are some full-time employees, yes. So we, um, through our typical onboarding process, we did background checks, we did right. all yes. of the vetting. Yep. Um, you know, the people that work in child care that, you know, they have the extra level of scrutiny. So, right, right, so right. that has okay. all gone through our HR process and, right. and we used our, um, we've also been working with our township attorney on the labor side of things a lot. Okay. Um, and what we're calling this first 90 days for the staff there is we're calling it our operational onboarding time. So okay. um, we've been very upfront and transparent with them as well. Um, they are township employees. Matter of fact, today they are getting, are getting mailed their first paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So it's been uh, quite a process of getting that all sorted out. Um, the one thing I can tell you on that is we're confident that um, we have they have a great team. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, it's it's a it's a unique every receiver. I, I personally have never gone through the receivership process. It's similar to bankruptcy, but right. but different. Uh, in that the creditor got paid. The creditor Comerica Bank was made whole by the through the purchase of the township. Um, so there's not bad blood. I think sometimes bankruptcies have a, this bad scenario. So it's it's not like that. But we inherited a family. We inherited a team, mm -hmm. and many Very of the employees, many of the employees have been there 
mm-hmm. since the day they opened. You know, they, you know, we've had several yeah. employees that said, I interviewed and hired when I when there was a construction trailer out front here. Yeah, um, they have amazing institutional knowledge. They mm-hmm. have relationships with members, and even just this week, every day we're meeting mm-hmm. and talking and learning about now these new Orient team members that have all these unique skill sets, and mm-hmm. um, we're already starting to think and brainstorm like how can they maybe assist with other existing things happening here in our community center and with our seniors and things. Right. So we're still brand new at this. And I mean, I've, I've, we've always heard the phrase drinking from the fire hose, but this is, <laughs> this feels like it. hundred yeah. percent. I was just going to say too, I feel like shout out to all the staff that have been there and through all the scrutiny and everything that's happened within like the past six months, we keep telling them like they've been warriors, like truly they have been so resourceful. They understand like what they've been through. So mm-hmm. like Chris said, like they're dynamite. They're, they're some really great staff. So we're very thankful for that. Great. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, about the senior se- uh, part of this thing. My favorite because, topic. You know, yeah, I know that's <laughs> your favorite subject, right? Because right now we have a senior exercise room downstairs, yes. mm-hmm. $6 a month. Yep. Uh, will we have something similar to that when we get to the new facility? Or will question. they have to end up paying the whole membership fee? Yeah, so ideally, and, I, and Chris can jump in too, but we feel like there's going to be a senior wing. Like when you travel to Farmington Hills, um, West Bloomfield, Troy, they all have like senior entrances. So you don't have to feel like the overload of a fitness center. You can walk into a separate entrance and just feel like you feel when you walk into the Orient Center. Okay. Um, That would be ideal uh, situation. Of course, the consultants will help us through all of that. Um, So within the parameters of like a, a nice little senior wing, could there be a potential for an exercise room? If there is, 100%. I would love to offer that to them. But that has to be done through the consultant to figure out strategically how that would work and if it makes sense okay. for them to have that. Because we don't want to take space up for senior programming when they could use the right. exercise room. I know the big question also was like silver sneakers and exactly. hats, that, that was the other activity health, I fit on. Of course, of course, I would love to offer all those things to the seniors. Um, But that also just comes with creating an operation plan in place because those things are not easy to just implement. There's a lot that goes into those insurance companies to make it make sense for us. Right. And there's a lot of admin work behind all of that. I mean, just the few that we have here, it takes a long time to get that done. It's not just like, oh, easy to process. Right. They make it difficult, but we're looking at it. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, we've, we've had people, which is great, you know, just stroll in and say, okay, now this is our community center. You know, what can I do here? And, you know, so we've had some people a little bit disappointed and that's why we're continuing to try to explain, um, we don't want to do things twice. We don't want to spend mm-hmm. money and then say, oh, we should have done something different. So, um, you know, there's been scrutiny from some people that say, let's go, we want access to it right now. And then there's a, other things that, you know, have people have come to me and said, oh, the township's just trying to run a business now. and. And neither one of those are, are fully accurate, but in a snapshot in time, it might feel that way. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, think, um, I think we're asking people to, um, we, there's gonna be opportunities as we work with this consultant for people to sound off, to yeah. give us their opinions, right. to tell us what they'd like to see. That's a big part of this. And I think this board and the previous couple boards, and there's some carryover, has been really good at that. Not every community can say that. I'm really proud of the colleagues I have we don't get along with everything. We don't always see eye to eye. But when it comes to things like this, we've been really good at listening to the input of our residents. Okay. And, and I think that even, even though we knew it was tough and we did scrape, we scraped to pull the dollars together to not raise taxes. Um, we cut a lot of things in order to pull this off. And, it, and, and uh, you know, my team has heard me say over and over, this, it's not, this cannot fail. This will not fail. Mm-hmm. This will be a huge success for our community. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the message we're asking, probably mostly our seniors, is you still have a wonderful place here. Mm-hmm. You will not be displaced from this building. <laughs> and right. maybe not, I mean, who knows? Who knows what could happen, right? We're applying for grants all over the place. Um, but you won't be displaced from this building until we have a great space for you. Exactly. And so a little bit of patience is what we're asking for. I know not everybody yeah. is excited about that, but um, you know, the way I kind of envision this, and, have it, it, and it, it makes sense in my head, I came from the construction world. Mm-hmm. It's almost like if we were to say, okay, the community wants this, we've been hearing it for a decade, we have some money set aside, which we did, we're going to build a community center. 
we're two years away. We got to hire an architect. We got to find oh, the yeah. dirt. We got to put a shovel in the ground. That we know because we just built the you know township hall. It's it's a more than twelve month process. So we're not saying it's going to take two years. But if we were to start today and say we're going to do this, it that's would be at the least type, two years. That's the type of oh, process. Yeah. So. Yeah. The benefit we have is, okay, we have an existing building. The lights are on. People are using it. We made the conscious decision right. to say, let's keep the lights on. Let's keep people using it um, because, A, it is working. It's still serving the majority of the members, our township residents. Yeah. Uh, we did reduce uh, when we took over. There's a discount if you're a township resident, so there's a benefit there. Um, but instead of having a building sit there while we try to, you know, with the lights off and we have consultants and we're kicking the tires. It's still an active building. The other gem that's in that building that um, we haven't talked about yet um, is there's a cafe. Uh, we, right. we honored the lease of that cafe, which is a really cool group of three gentlemen, two veterans uh, and, and another partner of theirs. All three of them met at the gym and it was during COVID that that cafe closed. Okay. And they said, we'd love to, if they came out of COVID, we'd love to get this thing open again. And they went to the, the owner and made a lease deal. And it's open to the public, and it has been, but it's kind of a hidden gem, and people don't really know about it. But in the couple months between when we started getting interested and when we purchased the building, I'm there three, four days a week. It's okay. it's nicer than Starbucks. You're working out too, right? I love being able to say, <laughs> this is a joke. I like being able to tell people, the, hey, I'm going to the gym. Right. Or, you know, and I talk to friends, hey, I'm at the gym. That's See, everybody I'm working out, but yeah. Yeah, I sit in the cafe. Yet. The cafe's beautiful. It's, it, and they is. just started for you senior coffee. So. Really? Yeah, you can go in and We get want the coffee, coffee clutch to move over there yeah. and, and just kind of kick the tires. But <laughs> Well, I, I was in there yesterday and took yeah. some pictures, and it was it really looks nice. Isn't in, it in cozy? The, the cafe is, is beautiful. Yeah. Nice fireplace, yeah. great service, yeah. and, yeah. and room for meetings and or, or the coffee it's clutch. A nice hangout. Yeah. And the walking track, too, I was going to say. The walking, I mean, most people have to walk over at the mall. So, like, having that nice indoor walking track. I was going to ask oh, you, to, to, let's, go, let's go through some of, the issues, some, of the, some of the nice things that Amenities. are in the club. Yeah. I mean, we, we can start out with just the, uh, the, uh, the room with all of the exercise. The equipment. cardio room, the yeah, cardio as you walk room. in. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, it's got, I don't know, it must be 35 or 40 machines in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least one of the things that's interesting that. is just the f, -F &E, furniture, finishings and equipment that's in every yes. new building that's there's oh, a yeah. line when you deal with a construction manager and a, or a general contractor they have to you have to budget for ff &E. yep. you know that's the art on the walls that's yeah everything drinking fountain that's that's the finishes that's the final stuff there's more than two million dollars in equipment Easy. and finishings and in equipment that's just in there that we you know would have had yeah. to purchase above, above on top so yeah um Amazing cardio room, and I'm, you know, I'm bouncing around because that's how my mind works. So I apologize, but I'll let you get back to kind of some of the amenities that we're walking through. Maybe Chelsea yeah, can tell us yeah. About some so of as you things. walk in, you have your cardio room, and then you go into more like free weight stuff that people right. like. Yeah. And then there's the two basketball courts basket, uh, where you can right. do pickleball and play basketball with your family. And then above that is the walking track. And then there's also more equipment for right. strength. And then there's two racquetball courts, a cycle studio. Uh, yoga studio, uh, rocking wall, pool. and then indoor pool, that's yeah. salt water, outdoor pool with the nice yellow big slide. Yeah. That's very cool in the summer. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we're almost to the end of our short half hour period here. I but was this gonna, has been extremely interesting. Yeah. We wanted to mention too, if you're interested in just coming get, to get a tour or purchasing a membership, go online to orionparks.com, hit Great Lakes Athletic Club in our top tab, and you'll see all the information there if they're if you're just interested in seeing what the price looks like right. yeah. well is there anything else you want to say to our community before we wrap it up here i think for me so so i'm i'm i wear two hats you know i, I wear the elected and chair the board meetings but also i i work for the residents every day um chelsea doesn't have the privilege of the <laughs> of the elected hat but um i just want to tell our residents i mean they put their trust in us um and you know, obviously, I live here. I love this community. Um, this will work. This will be some. This will be a feather in all of our caps. And this isn't like, look at what Penny and Kim and Mike and Brian and Julia and Matt and Chris did. This is this is like, wow, the community was forward thinking. Um, community, all mm -hmm. of us. You know, this is a, a, a. I would say a very little risk. This isn't a big risk. This is going to work. 
Okay. Um, you know, in the worst case scenario, uh, everything doesn't work, we can sell it. The, just the asset itself is, is worth what we paid plus some. Uh, but that's not our intention. It will work. Okay. Um, and I think what we're asking for mostly from the community is to understand this wasn't done overnight. It seems fast, but we did a ton of due diligence. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, um, some of the other things that we've done that have really set ourselves apart. I mean, our trails are national award winners. That, that took a vision. This board, this previous three boards that I've been a part of, put those plans together. The same thing with our parks program. Our properties, George, are trending on a 10 to 15% higher trajectory over the same five-year period over Rochester, over Clarkston, over Oxford. Now, we don't know why. We don't, the data doesn't show us exactly why. I'm convinced if you talk to any realtor, we have amenities in this community, mm -hmm. our parks, our lakes. Yeah. We didn't, have, we didn't do, have anything to do with the lakes, but the <laughs> parks and the continuing growing of those things, I think that's why people want to be here. And okay. so we're asking for patience, we're asking for a little bit of trust, um, and we're asking for input. There'll be an opportunity very okay. soon in the next couple months, we'll say, okay. uh, where we have this consultant fully on board where we'll, we'll be asking for our residents and all the different sectors, our students, our seniors, and everybody in between, um, how we can make this their building, because ultimately this is their building. Okay, well, we're just about out of time. So thank you so much for joining us and hopefully clearing up a lot of questions that have been around in the community. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for inviting us. Chelsea, thank you. Yeah. Chelsea works at the new building, so <laughs> do. you can pop yes. in and see her there. And I've already still, done that. Yes. You'll still see her at the, the Orient Center here, but, um, and I'm, I'm there almost every day also, and we, we welcome the questions. So if we didn't answer your question in this program, absolutely, look us up, we'll, we'll answer any question you got. Okay, Thanks. thank George. you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Thanks, George. Thank you.